Dry weather and gusty winds this week have been fueling grass and forest fires around the state. We talked to those on the front lines battling the flames. It's been nearly a year and a half since a fire destroyed the original Knox Whitley Animal Shelter. Now the new building is at a stage where animals can be brought in. Why are police questioning this woman? What authorities say she did and how it cost one business thousands of dollars. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening to you. Firefighters have an alert tonight. They say brush and forest fires have become a huge problem around Kentucky over the last few days. The dry weather and gusty winds have made it hard to get some of these fires under control. In Lincoln County, firefighters have been battling two fires. Phil Pendleton talks to them in our top story at 530. And smoke continues to rise up from these forest fires that are behind me here just off of U.S. Highway 127 beside the railroad tracks just south of the Junction City area. Actually, one of two woodland fires that firefighters have been busy fighting this afternoon. The fire comes as Lincoln County is included in the burn ban. There's supposed to be no burning through this evening. Fire broke out just before 1 o'clock and then a second fire in a separate field about 30 minutes later. Three stations from the Lincoln County Fire Department responded. The assistant chief says it can be challenging fighting a fire like this. It's not like a house fire. It's difficult because it's heavy brush and some of this wood, woodland's been here for hundreds of years and it's been piled up due to the storms and stuff. So the fire's got under, under some of that and it's uh, burning quite rapidly because of that. Fire chief says as of now, they really have no idea what caused this fire. They say no structures were at risk of burning. In Lincoln County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The fire did burn close to some railroad tracks, but emergency leaders say it did not affect any trains. Looks like rain will soon be moving back into the bluegrass, but our chances for storms also going up. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is following it very closely. Chris? Yeah, those gusty winds we had yesterday kind of fueling some of those fires, uh, Sam and Amber, really taking a back seat today. That is good news. We still have the bone dry humidity in the air, but as you mentioned, rain chances do go up over the next couple of days. A little look outside, 70 into London, everybody else into the mid 60s with dry conditions rolling on, and at least it is beautiful out there. That big blue sky. Hint of some cloud cover now beginning to filter in on the nose of even warmer air across western Kentucky. 71 Bowling Green, 77 Paducah. That's a little taste of the air we're going to get in on tomorrow. Now, it's also going to come with a threat for some showers and thunderstorms as humidity increases out of the Gulf of Mexico. We're beginning to see those showers and storms cranking up into parts of Missouri, down into the Memphis, Tennessee area and points to the south. Nothing expected, though, this evening or overnight across central and eastern Kentucky. That threat for showers and thunderstorms will come at us as we go into the day tomorrow with scattered boomers here and there. Certainly not an all-day rain, but the focus of the forecast over the next 48 hours, thunderstorms, some of those could be even strong or severe, and heavy rain taking center stage through this time period. When I come back in a little bit, we will take you hour by hour into the start of that Easter holiday weekend and show you the progression of those showers and storms, guys, and just how much rain they may drop across our region. A fire destroyed the original building more than a year ago, but now, after a long wait and a lot of hard work, the Knox Whitley Animal Shelter has a new permanent home. Animals are now being moved into the new building, and shelter workers say it's a huge milestone for them. Sam Smith has the update. The folks working here at the Knox Whitley Animal Shelter have been looking forward to this day for a long time. It's been a long, almost year and a half. Animals are being moved into the new shelter, a building that offers three times the space of the original shelter that burned down in November of 2013. There was times we, we often wondered if we was going to make it. We knew we would, but it's been a hard process to get where we're at right now. Shelter director Deanna Myers says this temporary shelter has allowed them to continue to operate while this building was being converted into the new shelter. Crews will spend the rest of the week moving animals and equipment into the new building. Work at the new building is not 100% finished, but Myers says they needed to make the move now. 
It is springtime, so that is going to mean extra animals coming through as far as puppies and kittens and litters. Everyone here is grateful that move-in day has arrived. It has been emotional and it has been very hard for every one of us, but I think what holds us all together is knowing that we're going to save many more lives. Adoptions are on hold during this transitional period. They'll start up again on Saturday at this new location. In Corbin, Sam Smith, WKYT. Animal shelter workers tell us they serve Knox, Whitley, Clay, and McCreary counties. A former high school principal who's under investigation now says he plans to retire. Our county by county coverage begins in Whitley County. The Whitley County superintendent says former Whitley County high school principal Alan Sweet will retire at the end of the school year. Sweet also will not appeal his demotion as principal. State police say Sweet is the subject of a criminal investigation, but they have not released any details. He was suspended two months ago. The case of a man accused of plotting to attack the U.S. Capitol has been delayed. 21 year old Christopher Cornell is from Ohio, but he's being held at the Boone County Jail. Today, a federal judge postponed pretrial filing deadlines in the case from April 10th to May 29th. Prosecutors asked for the delay, saying they needed to make sure classified information was protected. Cornell has pled not guilty to attempted murder of government employees and officials. In Morgan County, we're tracking the investigation into a house fire. The house, the fire rather, started this afternoon on Highway 589 near West Liberty. At last check, firefighters were still on the scene, and investigators say they have the road blocked. They say that no one was injured in the fire, but it caused extensive damage. They're still trying to figure out what caused the fire. A former University of Louisville basketball player charged with rape and sodomy has been released from home incarceration. Chris Jones was released today on a $20,000 unsecured bond. Two other men charged in this case were also released from home incarceration. Police say Jones raped two women at a Louisville apartment complex in February. The case will be presented to the Jefferson County Grand Jury later this month. Police now say driver error caused a charter bus to crash in southern Indiana last month, injuring 20 people. The bus carrying Indiana Tech bowling teams crashed on Interstate 65 just north of Louisville. Police say the bus did not have any mechanical issues. They now say the driver went off the road and then overcorrected. That caused the bus to overturn into a ditch. Our next story comes with a warning about theft in the workplace. As you will see, one employee can steal tens of thousands of dollars or even more if the right safeguards are not in place. So you take in payments and do billing? Correct. You are watching and listening to Don Webb being questioned by police investigating an embezzlement scheme. For 15 years, Webb worked at a law firm as a legal assistant, and now she's a suspect. The law office was responsible for uh, collecting money or suing individuals that had not paid for their apartment rent or hadn't paid a, a bill, a financial bill. Specifically, Webb's job was to accept those payments, record them in the law firm's books, and deposit the funds. But instead... She would add her name in the payee portion, take it to her local bank, and cash the check. In all, authorities say she took in more than $118,000. Colleagues were stunned when they found out. A long-term employee, over 15 years she'd been working at this law office. She wouldn't have been on anyone's radar because of the trust that they had in her. Postal inspectors say Webb used the money on gambling, cosmetic surgery, and personal expenses. She created a ledger with all the money coming in, and there was nobody checking that ledger. Postal inspectors say all businesses, big and small, need to make sure they have checks and balances in place. Always do some type of an audit of your books, making sure that the funds coming in are actually the funds that you're receiving. Postal inspectors say internal checks and balances and audits are really the best ways to detect theft and fraud. Don Webb pled guilty and was sentenced to one year and a day in jail.